I am Stacy Griffith. You guys should know that by now, but then for it to reiterate it, I guess. <laughs> and I am just doing this session just to, I guess, officially announce the book that I wrote. And seriously, now, no. Okay. <laughs> The Complete Guide to Land Hermit Crabs and Their Care, Changing the Mindset of Hermit Crab Keeping. So this is my book. This is the very first book I've ever published that's an actual book. Um, I've been doing planners for a while, and I um, did the Choi Log, that, which was a husbandry uh, book, but didn't involve writing anything. So yeah, this was my very first attempt at writing a book. Um, and really it was because several people in the Facebook group said to me, you know, you should write a book. You should write a book. And in my mind, CSJ was already the book, you know, but more and more, it seems like as a society, people are less interested in visiting websites and reading as opposed to just hanging out on social media. So I feel like a lot of the content there is lost just because um, there's, you know, people would rather be on social media. And so I find myself regurgitating content onto social media, just trying to get it out there. But then there's a whole group of people that just don't do things online or prefer to have a book. I prefer to have a book. I have low comprehension when reading on a screen. So... They, they, you know, kept saying, you should write a book. You should write a book. Guys, I don't know how to write a book. I can copy and paste the stuff from CSJ. So I started there. I took my core articles from CSJ and put them into a document. I had an outline of the topics I wanted to cover. And I put all those art articles together. And um, then I didn't know what to do. Like, well, this is this is not a book. <laughs> this is a word document. Now what do I do? And I am the kind of personality who uh, I don't like to wallow in the minutia of a project. I like to say I finished a project. <laughs> so like sometimes to my own detriment, I I just will bulldoze through something just to get it done. Like I just can't like, even when I quilted, I couldn't be one of those people who did a slow quilting. I did strip quilting that went together quick so that I could finish a quilt in a matter of months versus years. Like, so, um, I just sort of walked away from that for a little bit and let it sit, which was in the end a good thing because when I decided that like, okay, COVID started and now this is going to be a great time to work on the book. Uh, I realized that, that it just needed to be more. And I started thinking about what I wanted it to be and what was the point of this book. And it started to grow beyond just basic care information. And I started pulling in additional topics and then at this point, my outline didn't even make any sense. I totally like <laughs> the, what Mary first edited for me, bless her heart, ended up being like a very rough draft. I had no idea that it was going to be this much work. Like I had no clue what I was getting into. First, I did all the text. And even at this point, when I went back to it, I realized that um, the whole layout, the way that I put it together needed to change because it didn't make any sense. It didn't flow. It was just chunks of data that I put together in the same word document. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not professional. This is not cohesive. Uh, so I let that marinate for a little while in my brain. And I started writing down all of the media that I wanted to be in the book because I am very visual. And if there's one thing that you may have learned about me, this crab con is that there are not enough crab pictures in the world. And I will just sit 
sometimes get distracted over on Flickr, just searching for new crab picks. I just, um, I just love to look at hermit crabs. So I wanted really amazing photos in my book. And then I knew that a lot of people were visual learners. So I wanted to be able to show them things and not just have text. I was really fond of the four dummies series. I, I use those a lot and I liked the idea of putting little pro tips in there. So I started working on, you know, that kind of stuff. I wanted this to be backed by research, like everything that we do. Uh, so I started pulling resources that uh, backed up everything that I was saying and trying to put those together. And unfortunately, over the years, uh, putting stuff on CSJ, I was not as diligent about sourcing my information as I should have been. Over time, I've gone back and tried to fix that. But it took me a little while to even sort out my own, my own sources. Um, I do have two of my favorite books right here. The first one is this one. This isn't all devoted to hermit crabs, but there is a section on hermit crabs and a lot of it is applicable because it is land crabs. And then this one is probably my all time favorite. And you look at all the, <laughs> look at all my my tabs <laughs> where all my references and things are it's not a very thick book but it's all about our purple pinchers so those were my primary resources so i was able to get a lot a lot documented or um cited through that so then i started like making a list of the media that i was going to need reaching out to ask people for hi kim for permission to use their photos um and then uh finally like at the beginning of i think it was the beginning of 2021 i i decided that i'm gonna buckle down and get this done and like a fool thought i would be done by crab So I got, um, I got the like first, <laughs> I started putting it together and I got the first proof from Amazon and I had picked a font that was way too big. <laughs> Poor Andy, Andy Arlen from Indonesia helped me with some of my layout and just graphics and like designing my cover and stuff. Mary was my content editor and, um, he helped me with uh, the like interior because that's what he does. And it was a hard pill to swallow to, um, to hear that um, I was going to have to go back and basically rebuild my publisher file because that's where I was assembling it from. Uh, and once you resize the font, it changes every single page and changed where all the pictures were and all the text boxes everything moved <sighs> yeah <laughs> it was rough i think i ended up going through a total of 10 of the um proof copies like amazon will let you order a, an author proof to see how it looks and i think it took me 10 of them to get the interior right it I was struggling and I was like, just about to just say, I can't do this. I, I don't have what it takes to, to figure out these details. And I work in tech, but I was just like drowning in my own stupidity <laughs> for a lack of a better word. Like I just, I could not. And I just felt like I was just never going to, I was never going to get done. I was never, ever, ever going to get done. So I finally got to a point where I'm like this time, it's finally, it's done. It's ready. I'm so close. I'm going to order one more copy just to make sure before I publish it, that it goes out live to the world, that it looks right. And that first copy came 
And the first two chapters were upside down. And the rest of them were off the page. Like the person who loaded the file into the machine to print it, like had a stroke in the middle of it or something. I legitimately just cried, like threw it across the room. I was so mad. Like, stop doing this to me. And I sent the file to Andy and he's like, it's not you. Your file is perfect now. You're right. The person who loaded this in the printer just didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> but I was so mad. So finally, uh, I started this in 2018. I live published to the world in December, on my birthday, December 2021. It took me that long to write a book. And I never imagined it was going to take me more than a year when I started. Like, I was so... I don't even know if I, I don't think I ever said that out loud or voiced my expectations. Um, but to the people that write books on a regular basis and um, publish books on a res, uh, regular basis. Wow. Wow. Um, there will be at some point, some updates coming to the book, not only because, um, we're going to have some new species coming, I think. And I did leave a place for them in the book, but I expect that some of our, care to will continue to change and evolve so at some point there may be another another way to um update the book and so through amazon i can just you know publish a second edition but i'm gonna just go ahead and i don't have a i only had two hard covers on hand and they sold out really quickly i have plenty i think i have plenty more paperbacks on hand but if you want a hardback you can order it and on back order and on Monday, I'm going to place another order for some hardcovers to fill whatever was back ordered over the weekend. So they'll be in in about seven days usually, and then I'll get them out to you. And your coupon will still work, I believe, on the back order. It should just put you, it should just add it to the cart when you add your, um, when you add your book to the cart on CSJ. If you're shopping on Amazon, now the CrabCon code does not work on Amazon. If you go through the Crab Street Journal market, you can use your code there. That's my online shop. Thank you, Christine. So I don't want to show you the whole book, but I do, I'll show you, you know, some of the, the key, key sections, I think. Uh, and again, Andy helped me. He helped me with the front. Um, Andrea Skinner helped me sort out the title and, um, I don't remember who helped me with the bio on the back. I don't, I don't exactly remember. A lot of people helped me so much along the way, whether it was just, um, providing pictures or, um, information, you know, to me, answering my questions double checking stats the the very first chapter is just you know what is a hermit crab definitely don't skip over the um acknowledgement either because you need to know how much i <laughs> i'm not gonna cry how much i love mary So that first section just um, just kind of introduces, because I want anybody to, not just people who have already have hermit crabs, but I want people who um, just are interested to have some, like some of the stuff that you learned today about their ecology and their biology, their habitat and the things that they do. So the whole first section is just about getting to know them as an animal and their role in the, the world and the ecosystem. And then I um, have a gallery of the known species that we have. But um, I left the, the placeholders in there. So this is a species here, the Carnisons, that while it's listed, has never, has never been seen or found since it was originally documented. 
Um, the same with, uh, I believe that's Oliveri, isn't it? Yeah, Oliveri and Longitaris. There's, there's three species listed there who have no photos of them exist anywhere. Um, it took a long time to get photos of Scavola because Scavola only lives on the Red Sea and they're not part, not really part of the pet trade. It's like so hard to get them out of the country. Um, just until recently, Rubicens and Spinosa were not seen in the pet trade. So it, their, their pictures were harder to find too. But um, I did leave spots for the two that um, Felix believes that are going to be confirmed later this year. There's lots of bonus content in here. Anywhere that I could squeeze in extra pictures just because I wanted to, I did because it's my book and I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> then uh, chapter two is talking about, you know, having crabs as pets, basic care information, In the, oh, I forgot the second section too. Um, that is threats to hermit crabs. So I cover some of the, the threats that they face that we saw today. I'm sorry you guys had a hard time finding the session. I'm glad you're all getting in here now though. So we had section one, which is her, what is a hermit crab? That, you know, their basic um, biology and then them in the pet trade threats to hermit crabs. And then section three is the, um, it's a mix, the pet trade as a threat, um, habitat loss, resource loss, kind of all encompassing microplastics. Humans are a threat to everything on the planet. We're the worst thing on this planet. We're the most destructive. <laughs> Uh, so the, the section three is uh, care and husbandry, like the meat of the book. And so I go through, you know, step-by-step -step basics, basic care, and then how to handle common problems, um, the post-purchase death reduction method, why we do that. There's a chapter on breeding and reproduction where you can, um, which is going to need to be updated soon with the progression of Mary and Darcy and others, you know, someday we'll have some bigger updates to add to that. Vacation care. Section four is uh, about the, the LIPOS care program, community advocacy, research, education, and how you can help hermit crabs and um, things you can do, what I'm doing, a little bit about crab con in here. Thank you guys so much for ordering. Um, it has the Lycos mission statement. If you didn't get out to the boardwalk to see John's banner that was up on the boardwalk, I believe it's been two summers ago now. That's in here, preserved for all of posterity. Rita was there. Rita went out and saw it. So like the pet sitter instructions are here on separate pages, like color pages where you can even photocopy that and leave it for your pet sitter. Like you can book somebody's babysitting your crabs, just bookmark parts for them. And then all of our contact information is in here. And then the very last section is the species photo gallery. So basically the, the last section is a hermit crab picture book. You'll get to see a juvenile and adult of each species. Um, I think that I think that the one heart back for sure has already gone out. I'm pretty sure they're both already gone in the mail, unfortunately. Like it's basically the same. It's the same size as this same white cover, just a, a hard cover. Like I didn't change anything except what I had to margin wise. And then in the back, I have given you um, a resource section for things that you may need or want to look up. 
Included in here is the address for Crustacean Plantation, as well as Sean Miller's address. <laughs> Mother of crabs. I wish we could find her and somehow bring her um, on CrabCon, but from Thailand, who also does the same thing, and she brings children out to watch the crabs change shells. You can send <coughs> her shells also. My citations are here in the back. Books that I recommend are here in the back. Videos that I recommend are in the back. Um, and then I did take, um, I did take a moment to um, talk about mold in the very back of the book. I, I did not want to get um, on my soapbox in the middle of the book, but I felt like it needed to be stated. In the back, um, the actual statements regarding mold and the hazards of them. And then the very last thing I've given you a chart for tank sizes, dimensions, and then uh, how much it weighs empty and then how much it weighs with the minimum amount of sand in it. And I don't remember Savannah. I don't remember if this is the one that Savannah put together for me or not. But I know she did make a um, chart that I use in here someplace. But there's just like loads and loads of photos everywhere. Everywhere I could squeeze in a picture, I did. Pictures. There's, uh, if you've seen Homie, the legless crab in the group, Homie's story is in here. I just saw it. There he is. Homie, forever, forever immortalized from legless to rock star. <laughs> that is a fantastic story. So, um, I don't know if you, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> so this is my, my care book. The other book that I published was the Choilog. This is Moa's crab. <laughs> this is a husbandry journal. So if you are nerdy enough that you want to track, absolutely I'll sign books. I'm signing everyone that goes out the door for CrabCon, um, just even just with my name and um, the basics. But this has, uh, this will have to be updated after next year, but the front of it has the moon phases for the year. It shows you how to use the face sheets for your crabs, where you write down foods I like, my species, my current color, my ge current gender, size, and then they'll, this little box is where you put your dot pattern in for their SETI pattern. There's even a spot um, if you need to practice. I gave you dots to practice. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. I, I just, I didn't even notice. So you get blank pages. Um, it, I think that I gave, oh, that's, um, did I do like six of the face sheets per, let me count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's 10 face sheets, and I think there's, um, if I remember right, I put them in there, it looks like maybe twice, or it's been so long since I did this, so that you have a chance to update twice in a year. If a regular person who didn't know crabs had made this, you would have gotten like two of these, but I know that like nobody has just two crabs. <laughs> Um, on the months, I've given you like a key where you can chart um, like that somebody went down to molt, they're digging, things like that, like my, what my temperature was. If you want to write down the temperature every day, places to write notes, basic note taking just on, on the weekly agenda layout. My link is at the top. The link tree takes you to all the books. Right now, these are sold out on my personal website, which is Crab Street Journal. The care book, I am sold out in hardback on my website, but the paperbacks are still there. 
Amazon, I've got, um, you can get either, you can still get the hardback off Amazon. It's just not going to come directly from me and you can't use the code. There's also the coloring books that I made. This particular one has um, blank pages where you can doodle also. Aw, I love that. And then I also do, these are planners for your life, but they have hermit crab covers on them. They, I have two that are Darcy's pictures, and then this one that is one of Felix's. I cannot live without my planner, but the stuff that they sell on the market is just not, does not suit me at all. So, um, first of all, most of them are so small, I can't write in them. And then I can't read what I wrote because I'm old but they're blank date wise so it's july you don't have to go and buy a planner off the shelf and only get to use five months of it you can start this the first month in the book today or august and get a full 12 months out of it you write the dates in you write the months in then there's uh, five weeks for every month not just four because that's annoying when there's a month with five weeks and I ain't got nowhere to write my stuff. Like I just like, do you guys use the things that you publish? Because this is completely unusable. <laughs> I'm trying to think what else is in here. Oh, the the note taking pages where you can just randomly write whatever. I should have brought in my one from last year that was like fully filled up, but. I'll show you. I am also obsessed with stickers. <laughs> so I do the washi paper and I put stickers and my little to do notes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you're a book junkie, you might like my planners. I have some other different themed ones if for some reason that you wouldn't want hermit crab ones in. But if you don't want a hermit crab ones, I, I don't know if we should be speaking to each other. The pages, uh, I don't know what you mean by reusable. Oh, no, uh uh. No. They're just regular paper pages. I used to try to use my digital calendar, but with so much stuff going on, I can't keep up. And I kind of realized, this is off topic, but I've been watching um, a guy that um, does behavioral stuff, um, human behavioral body language and stuff like that. And I was watching a thing about like hacking your own brain. And he said, the visual reminder, constantly seeing it written down or a picture of it helps train your brain for that um that habit so now my planner is open every single day i make notes in it every single day i check things off every single day uh it, it's helped me advance planning instead of having like i've been taking notes all weekend there's like literally 10 of these pieces of paper floating around oh we have to go but i transfer them all to my planner so um it, it really like has just helped me so much. We need to go, you guys, we need to go because I'm not missing the 2023 teaser. Let's go, <laughs> go get my book, but let's go watch this teaser because, oh my God, hi. <laughs>